Hey YouTube, to Extreme MX here, and today in this video, what I'm going to show you is, is how to properly adjust your valves um, using the right shim. Um, first thing you're going to do, need to do is you're going to need to get a manual for your um, ATV or dirt bike, um, so that way you know what the proper tolerance is, you know, proper clearance is for each valve, your intake and your exhaust valves on your ATV or motorcycle um, and then get those or check all them to make sure um, if you don't know how to check your valves I have another video posted on how um, to actually check the valves using feeler gauges and everything like that um, in this video I'm actually just showing you how to find out what shim you need to put in your bike to fix um, a valve that's out of adjustment um, for starters, um, if you're using an aftermarket cam system, if you're doing an upgrade um, or anything like that, make sure that you have the new cams in um, before you check your clearances, because you you know new cams have no wear on them, so they're actually going to have different clearances than your old cams. But if you're using just you're just checking your valves and you're going to do the adjustments with the cams that are in it already. Um, you can go ahead and what you need to do is check each valve and then what I do is um, we're using my YFC 450 as reference and we're going to do the exhaust um, just to show you how it's done um, on the YFC 450 exhausts um, the tolerances are between 0 0.20 and 0 0.25 millimeter um, what I do is I will go and check my valves if they are within tolerance all I do is I just mark it on this little diagram here I'll you know go through and if it's all right within specs I'll just put an X on it saying you know basically let myself know that I don't need nothing no, don't need to do anything with that valve um, we're gonna just put a fictitious number down here um, we're gonna say that this valve here clearance was 0.29 millimeter um, again the, the tolerances are 0.20 to 0.25 millimeter so what we got here is a 0.29 alright what you need to do is um, in the Yamaha manual they actually give us a little cheat chart here to figure out what shim to put in um, First, you need to find out what shim is already in there, and to do that, you're going to have to remove your cap. Um, I have another video that shows you how to take these caps off and how to get your shims out. Um, and this here is what the shims look like, right here. And most shims are usually numbered, and they're numbered without a decimal point. Um, they're usually write like 165, 160, they'll actually range anywhere from 120 all the way up to 240 on the Yamahas. Um, that number is actually, there's a point in there after the first number because it's actually a millimeter size. Um, 120 would be actually 1.20, 240 would actually be 2.40. Um, if your number isn't written on the shim to actually find out what shim you have what I have done is is I will go out and get my get a digital caliper system and you need the digital one because the ones that you just read the numbers you can't get a really good reading with them um, the digital actually gives you a more better reading um, basically what you do is just turn it on make sure it's zeroed out you just open her up, slide your shim in, just like that, as you see here, and close it up. Now, these shims will only come in 0 .05 and 0 .00 increments. So, if you see, like this here says 1.81, it's actually a 1.80. Um, 
and again like I said the numbers that usually are on the shims have no point on it so this actually the shim number on this shim would really be a 180 so now we know that this shim is supposed to be a 180 um, what I usually do is I'll write down you know the shim number if the number isn't on it already and then you can go to the Yamaha cheat chart here to figure out your tolerance which um, we said that this one was point, point 0.29 and on the side here in the cheat chart I'm just going to show exhaust measured clearances so we're going to find point 0.29 and here's a range here that has point 0.29 you see here 0.26 to 0 0.30 so basically we want this one here and we know that the installed pad number is 180 so it's that one here so what we need to do now is we need to come from right across here to the 180 there's the 180 pad 0 0.26 0.30 so it says we need to put in a point, oh, 185 pad number. Now some companies sell their pads with numbers like this. Some companies sell pad numbers that would be like 1.85. It's the same thing, just minus the point. Um, so again, we'd have to get the 185 shim and put it in there. And that would put us back within spec. <clears throat> now, if you don't have a cheat chart in your manual like this, the other way you can do it is by writing down the pad number that you have inside right now. So we have a 180 pad in there. The clearance currently is 0.29. So we need to get that down within range. And again, the pads come in 0 0.05 and 0 0.10 increments. So to we need to make this pad, this shim here, larger to take up the difference right here to make that clearance smaller. So to make it larger, if we went up to a up by 0.5 which would actually make the pad a 185 pad that would give us a 0.24 clearance that would actually be within spec um, but it'd be really really borderline so you'd have to keep an eye on your um, you'd have to check your valve again after a few months of riding um, me personally I would go a point one larger which would actually be a 190 pad and that would actually take it to a point one nine clearance now that point one nine clearance is smaller than a point two zero to point two five they recommend but it is pretty close and I'd run with it myself personally it really won't do too much to it they'll give you a little bit more of an open on your exhaust or whatever valves opening but at least it would be taken care of now this is the way I do it um, on most bikes again like I said the Yamaha is the only one I've really I, I haven't really looked at many other manuals I've usually done this without the manuals um, but the Yamaha has a nice cheat sheet. I'm not sure about the Hondas or anything else, but you can always check. You know, like I said, make sure you have a manual when you do this. Um, it's always helpful. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or anything, um, just post them below. I'll answer them as soon as I possibly can. And you know, if you want, subscribe to my video. Subscribe. I'll be posting more videos over the next couple months. Um, with spring coming up, there's going to be a lot more videos coming out. Um, again, this is 2 Extreme MX, and you guys have fun riding.